Washington Grown is brought to you by the Potato Farmers of Washington. Learn why Washington is home to the world's most productive potato fields and farmers by visiting potatoes.com. And by Northwest Farm Credit Services, supporting agriculture and rural communities with reliable, consistent credit and financial services today and tomorrow. And by the Washington State Department of Agriculture's Office of the State Aquaculture Coordinator, supporting the viability and vitality of Washington agriculture. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Gortson and welcome to Washington Grown. In this beautiful state, our farmers work hard to bring us some of the best food in the world. But did you know that over half of all Washington farmers have jobs other than farming? So in this episode, we are celebrating Washington's very own part-time farmers. We'll meet up with Linda Noonzig, a farmer in Arlington who also has another job as an agriculture coordinator. 4 a.m. I was delivering quadruplets and at 9 a.m. I had a delegation from China. And I'm in the kitchen with renowned chef Holly Smith cooking rack of lamb with anchovy walnut salsa. People love anchovies as long as you hide them and they don't see them. I'm one of those people. I'm like, don't tell me that there's anchovies in there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> then, Tomas is on the street trying out a Thai lamb slider with a special ingredient. It's going to make your mouth okay. happy. You're right. <laughs> it's making my mouth happy. <laughs> All this and much more today on Washington Grown. Bon appetito! Bon appetito! There are no fingers in there There's no either. fingers no, in it and they, and they still look green. <laughs> this is happy food right here. That is heaven on a fork. <laughs> look at that smile. <laughs> oh, I've never That's done sweet, that before. Right? Got my hard hat on. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Today we're taking a trip to northern Italy right here in our own backyard. Chef Holly Smith at Cafe Juanita uses her culinary expertise to craft an experience like none other. I think Holly's the best chef in Seattle. I definitely recommend coming here for anybody who's looking to get out, have a special night. People love it. I mean, there's a long list waiting to get in and yeah. that's nice. No, it's lovely. Everything that they've had has been simple, but the taste is really amazing. She's constantly innovating and the quality of the ingredients always stands out. It just tastes better. I mean, cooking in season is the most important thing and trying to get it as close as we can to our back door has always been um, the goal. For me, I can have ingredients that are very typical of regions that I want to be inspired by. How do you get inspired to create I think hunger stuff. is usually my, hunger. my yeah, no. <laughs> The anticipation of what's coming uh, tends to fuel my yeah, creative juices. That. Yeah. And actually, that's one of the things that keeps me coming back too. There are things where I won't eat them anywhere else, but I'll eat them here because Holly does such a great job. We've also been nominated for Outstanding Restaurant in the United States, and that's the one that the yes. chef one. I'm like, yeah. yeah. But the team that's mm -hmm. in this house um, makes me really proud. Coming up, Chef Holly and I will be cooking rack of lamb from a local farm. There's a joke in my neighborhood that I bring lamb home, and that if you come to Holly's house on a Tuesday, she might be having rack of lamb. I think it's a <laughs> fine problem. Today we're out in the pasture in Arlington, finding out what it takes to be a part-time farmer. I'm Linda Nunzig. This is the beautiful Still Aguamish Valley in Arlington, Washington. It is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah. This is my farm, 90 Farms. Although Linda runs the farm by herself, she also has a day job as the agriculture coordinator for Snohomish County. There was a day where everybody laughed at me at work because at 4 a.m. I was delivering quadruplets and at 9 a.m. I had a delegation from China. So you go from <laughs> delivering babies and wearing barn clothes to putting on your girl clothes in your heels and yeah. makeup and you know, greeting a, a Chinese delegation on agriculture. On the farm, Linda raises Katahdin hair sheep. So they have no wool. They'll get wool in the wintertime and they'll shed it off completely in the summertime by themselves. And what that does is it affects the meat quality. Really? So when you eat the meat, uh -huh. it's not greasy. You don't smell it when you cook it. It's just a very mild, delicious lamb. Yeah. We have a lot of people come, oh, I don't like lamb. I don't, I don't eat lamb. Right. Say, well, here, take this home and try it. They now eat a lot of lamb. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, come on, Mom. Stop talking so I can work the sheep. Okay. Lexi, sure. come by. 
So she circles them to bring them all together. And so it'll take her a few minutes to settle them. Sure. So I try not to use a lot of commands. I want my dogs to think on their own. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it is letting her natural instincts work on their own. They know that they're supposed to work for the dog, but they're not afraid of the dog. Hi, girls. Hi. Although this may look like the perfect setting during our visit today, Linda has to deal with floods every spring. So this whole valley, everything you see goes underwater. Wow. And it's an incredibly flashy river, uh -huh. so you don't get but a few hours notice. And so because we love our animals, because we are very careful with how we raise them, if we bring them into this world, we have a responsibility to take good care of them. And so every single animal on the farm gets evacuated out if we think we're gonna flood. They're happy lambs. Thank you. you. <laughs> that, that's our goal as yeah. a farmer. If we can raise happy animals, then we're doing it right. Be tasty animals. Right. <laughs> happy animals are tasty animals. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you choose to raise sheep? I like them. Yeah. You know, farming is really hard work. Mm -hmm. And if you don't really love what you're doing, you're not gonna do it well. You know, if you have a passion for it, mm -hmm. and if you really love doing it, then you're gonna put that extra effort into it. My day job is a fabulous job. Mm -hmm. It's making sure that we're providing everything that we can for our farmers to be successful. I get to work with farmers all day. I get to help farmers. So if you wake up and decide, yeah. I wanna be a sheep farmer, <laughs> come to Snohomish County and they'll exactly. help you out. <laughs> How do you balance your day job and farm job? I mean, that seems pretty difficult. You know, this time of year, there's not a lot to do with them. As long as they've got good water and you're looking at them, making sure everybody's okay. The yeah. way you say it, it doesn't sound like it's that hard, <laughs> but I don't know. Get to know a farmer, learn about that farmer and what they do, and that will give you so much confidence in what you're yeah. eating and what's on your plate and why yeah. buying from a local <laughs> farmer is so important because you're keeping that farmer in business. Yeah. Hey, let's go. Don't let the size of the Mini Lenny fool you. The flavors that are coming out of this little trailer are huge and robust, just like the personality of the chef you're about to meet, Lynn Wren. Let's check it out. Tell me the story about the Mini Lenny. What's, the, what's, what's going on here? I wanted to bring a high-end, tasty cuisine to people that wasn't about a big bowl of starch with some protein on top. Now, I hear that this Thai lamb slider They're pretty ridiculous. is not only ridiculous, yeah. but I've heard it's also quite unique. Lynn makes the slider with fresh Washington lamb, garlic, mint, and cilantro, topping it all off with her secret sauce, crunchy peanut butter. So you're getting layers yeah. of flavor repeated throughout it, and for some ridiculous reason, it works. It's gonna make your mouth okay. happy. You're right. <laughs> it's making my mouth happy. That's fantastic. I'm so glad you like it. Now it's time to see what other people think of this delicious creation. Have you frequented Minnie Lenny's little trailer before? Not yet. It's delicious. It's the best you'll have hands down. She can cook. And she's mixing it up is what it sounds like. Do you like lamb? I love lamb. I think you're, you're okay, in for a we'll treat. So this is going to be a fun little Thai surprise. So why don't you give this a try? Is that peanut butter? Peanut butter. Soft and tasty. Just kind of melt in your mouth. That's bomb. This is great. I love it. Almost tastes like peanut butter in there. There is peanut butter on that. No way! Yeah. It's a weird combination you wouldn't think would work, but I mean, it's just, it's awesome. <laughs> it's epic. You don't go home saying, hey, let me put some peanut butter on some lamb. Right, exactly. <laughs> I think you signed me up for 12. Matter of fact, I might walk over there and get another one. <laughs> Today, I'm in a delicious cake shop near Seattle for a meeting with Laura Raymond, the regional market's program lead for WSDA. Through her job, she helps small farms navigate the complex issues that often come along with farming. What does it mean to be a small farm. There's many different things that that can mean. Okay. And what a small farm looks like can be very different, but we work with the USDA definition, which is farms that um, bring in less than $250,000 in revenue a year. Is a small farm the same as a part-time farmer? Well, you know, most of the farms that I know, even if they have a off-farm job. They're mm -hmm. certainly full-time farmers. As we all know, yes. there's so much that goes into running a farm. I mean, in Washington State, at least 89% of our farms fit that small farm definition. You know, there are real challenges for farms of all scales, especially small farms, ranging from the cost of land, especially for new farmers, being able to get on a piece of land often requires outside income. Most of them are really trying to be full-time yeah. and not rely on off-farm income. Yeah. So what is it that your department does for these small farms? Really what we do is we are trying to help smaller scale and direct marketing farms of 
a variety of scales connect with the markets that are a good fit for their scale and their product. So we'll get a phone call and say, you know, hey, this is my business idea. What do you think? Or what do I need to do? What permits do I need? How do I connect with this market? And we talk to people through that. This is something I'm so excited about right now. Farmers call this the Green Book. The Green Book. But it's our handbook for small and direct marketing farms. Mm -hmm. And it's probably one of the most popular resources that actually our department publishes. So this has everything they need to know. Everything they need to know from ideas around marketing strategies to regulations for selling specific products. Because we're out working with farms and talking with farms, we kind of know the things that are coming down the pike that might be important for them to be prepared for. Farms that are doing direct marketing or farms that are creating their own value-added products and finding markets, they're doing everything that a multinational company might do. It's one or two of them. It's so cool what you do. Yeah, I love it. That's awesome. To me, farmers are some of the most creative, entrepreneurial business people out there. And in Washington State, we just have like the best of the best in yeah. terms of this fabulous mix. And wow. so the fact that that's who I get to spend my time working yeah. with, I, yeah, it's true. Lucky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see them all as full-time farmers. I think you're right. <laughs> what animal has wool in the winter and hair in the summer? I'll have the answer right after the break. Coming up, we're cooking Rack of Lamb with award-winning chef Holly Smith. Now, why do you like anchovies? Oh, they're perfect. <laughs> My mother used to say, people love anchovies as long as you hide them and they don't see them. I'm one of those people. Ooh. I'm like, don't tell me that there's anchovies in there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and we're in the kitchen at Second Harvest trying out some Irish lamb stew. The animal that has wool in the winter and hair in the summer are Katahdin hair sheep. Fine dining has never looked better than it does here at Cafe Juanita, home of award-winning chef and owner Holly Smith. Her expertise in craftsmanship creates an experience patrons won't soon forget. I was in college for poli sci and things like that and started working in restaurants and I just loved the chaos yeah. of them. And hospitality is yeah. what I like more than anything. I love making people happy and, and helping them stay at the table. I think Holly's the best chef in Seattle. I definitely recommend coming here for anybody who's looking to get out, have a special night. She's constantly innovating and the quality of the ingredients always stands out. So from Polly Sai to James Beard Award winning best chef. Who knew that would happen? Wow. Yeah, it's kind How of How did that happen? I have no idea. Um, <laughs> I cook food that I want to eat, mm -hmm. and I tried to create a restaurant that um, I wanted to go to. I've had people say it feels like they walked into a treehouse. The food, the food is, uh, is above my dress code right now. It's amazing. If you come all dressed up. You do feel at home, although it's Seattle, so there's probably someone in a Hawaiian shirt and shorts yeah. next to you, uh, which we're good with. People love it. I mean, yeah. there's a long list waiting to get in, and yeah. that's nice. No, it's lovely. What are we going to make today? We're going to make a rack of lamb. So Belgian endive. Yeah, there's all sorts of different yeah. endives out there in the world. We chop some of the endives up and leave them raw. Then we saute the rest on low heat for about 10 to 12 minutes. I like to cook lettuces. We grill like romaine. Uh -huh. um, it ends up being very sweet. While that's happening, we begin our anchovy walnut salsa. We add some walnuts to the mixer, then move on to the anchovies. Now, why do you like anchovies? Oh, they're perfect. <laughs> My mother used to say, people love anchovies as long as you hide them and they don't see them. No, I agree. I'm one of those people. Mm. I'm like, don't tell me that there's anchovies in there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now we add some lemon zest and lightly pulse it. So we're going to see if, you know, this early morning yes. anchovy bite works for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And the walnuts round it out. Once our endives have begun to caramelize, take them off the heat and let them sit. Now it's on to the lamb. Today our lamb is coming from Linda Nunzig's farm. I always love to put a hearty amount of rosemary and lemon. Now we add salt, a lot of salt. We often under season and, and I think that's, you know, my, my friends when I come and I, I cook at their house, they'll say, oh. I don't put enough salt yeah. on my food. Put the lamb on the grill, then let it cook for about 20 minutes. After it's done, remove it from the heat and let it rest. Now we move on to our second salsa. We start by combining fennel tops, mint, and tarragon in a blender. Anything that you have in your garden, in your refrigerator, I encourage people to mix and match yeah. their herbs. Green onion in here is lovely. 
start heating up some minced garlic in a pan with extra virgin olive oil before adding it to the salsa. There's a joke in my neighborhood that I bring lamb home and that if you come to Holly's house on a Tuesday, she might be having rack of lamb. I think it's a <laughs> fine problem. Now that your lamb is rested, put it back on the grill for just a few minutes to reheat. Then it's back to the endives where we add some homemade Dijon vinaigrette. I have taxed my child with being the vinaigrette maker since nice. she was about five. Oh, good. I think everyone needs to know how to make a vinaigrette. Right. Now we add on the salsa. It's your salsa, remember, so yeah. um, make it however you like it. I'm a big fan of, you know, reminding people to take authority with, with, res <laughs> right. with recipes. You're the one eating yeah. it. Whoever wrote the recipe is not there. Okay. Because it's properly and it's, rested it's and it was totally gently cooked. All the way through, same color. Stem to stir. Yeah. I'm gonna try not to take a humongous bite. That lamb is so tender. Thanks for wow. eating lamb with me. Thank you for showing me how. Lamb and anchovies, it's, if, if you remember nothing else, lamb loves anchovies. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. <laughs> to get the recipe, visit wagrown.com. In the U.S., lamb consumption is about one pound per person annually, which is far less than any other type of protein. But the recent popularity of locally raised, grass-fed meat has led to a resurgence in the demand for lamb. Here in Washington, over 50% of all lambs are raised by part-time farmers or on small production farms. Like other types of red meat, lamb is a complete source of protein so it contains all nine essential amino acids our cells need to build strong muscle. Lamb is also a great source of vitamins and minerals, including vitamin B12, selenium, and zinc. Our body needs vitamin B12 for proper blood formation and brain function. Selenium is a mineral that is a powerful antioxidant and prevents damage from harmful free radicals that accumulate in our cells. Finally, lamb is a good source of zinc which our body uses to make insulin, a hormone crucial for regulating blood sugar levels. Now that you know lamb can be a healthy addition to your diet and a great way to support your local Washington farmer, I hope you'll consider including it in your next meal. Coming up, we're visiting the farm at Swan's Trail, where farming and fun come together to create an experience for the whole family. You do things to bring people here, but I think growing things is, is what we like. Part farmer, part educator, part entertainer, Ben Krause is the owner of the farm at Swan's Trail in Snohomish, where farming and fun are one and the same. I'm here with Ben Krause at his uh, beautiful farm in this gorgeous valley in Everett. So what are we looking at right now? Well, this is basically pumpkins. It's all pumpkins. As far as the eye can see. The farm at Swan's Trail is a public farm where people can come to pick fruit, enjoy a hayride, or go through the corn maze. During the week, we do school field trips. We'll see roughly 15,000 school kids with our maze program. The weekends are basically for the general public come in and we do see a lot of people. They'll do the maze, they'll pick apples, they'll uh, obviously get pumpkins. In the fall, that's when things really ramp up here. Right, in, in all the preparation we're doing this time of year, it's all for the fall. All for the fall. Yeah, on the weekends we stop and do our weddings and paintings. Yeah. But during the week, it's all preparation for the fall. Yeah. Whether it's building something new or maintaining something old. Yeah. You weren't always a farmer. No. My wife and I both taught. I don't know, I've always had this, I've always liked farming. And we really enjoy the growing of things. I'm yeah. always amazed by seed. I'm amazed by the growing of apples. I remember working for a guy up on construction in Northridge. And I looked out over the valley and he says, what are you gonna do, Ben? And I says, well, I'm probably gonna go to college, but see that guy down there on the tractor? That's what I wanna do. And he says, you don't want to do that. It's too much work. <laughs> and so how long have you been farming? Uh, 35 years. Wow. Full time. Wow. <clears throat> we started a little pumpkin patch in 95. <laughs> and the reason it started was because of some teachers asked us if we grow some pumpkins because they didn't have a good place to go get field trips. Aww. And that's where we how it started. How it started. So they're coming, you know, an hour and a half bus ride to get here. Yeah. One of those places. And it kind of all started with that one little pumpkin patch. The little pumpkin patch started. Well, tell me about your corn maze. This is gigantic and it's just getting underway, it looks like. I had this idea for three or four years. So I applied for an athletic director's job and didn't get it. And I thought, well, you know what? I'm gonna go home and build that maze and see what happens. It's funny, my salesman would drive, 
come out here and I'd be out there with the lawnmower then blowing corn all over the place, <laughs> not knowing if it was in shape like any, right. anything. And they'd be going, Penny, what are you doing, man? Guys are going broke growing corn and you're mowing it down. Corn maze is fun in itself, but then you put the educational part to it. Yeah, we want to make it so when they go around, they're going to learn about Washington. They're going to learn about Cooley Dam. We got Stonehenge way down there. We call it Cornhenge. <laughs> and then people come out here and take their wedding pictures, photos. Oh, cool. The boat in the cornfield. You yeah. know, I can't tell you how many people have taken their wedding photos there. I think a lot of reason people come here is because of space. Get out, get some fresh air and some <laughs> open space. The people call it, you say it's a destination. I don't use it, that term, but what we like to do is give them an experience. People oftentimes say to us, well, you don't farm, you entertain. Well, you know, you come out and spend 90 to 100 hours a week with me then, so. Well, you got to grow the stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you do things to, br to bring people here, but I think growing things is, is what we like to do. Well, it is gorgeous. A lot of work, though. Yeah, but who, you don't keep track of work. <laughs> you know. Because you love it. Yeah, I'd say I love it most of the time. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's you want to be good. honest during pumpkin patch? <laughs> For your next school field trip or just a Sunday visit with the family, the farm at Swan's Trail in Snohomish is an experience you won't soon forget. Tomas and I are in the kitchen at Second Harvest Food Bank in Spokane, and we are joined by Laurent Cerati. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, chef and owner of Fleur de Sel Creperie in Spokane. Delicious. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. I appreciate it. It's so good to see you both. You You're too. Help us out with some expertise tasting. We are featuring recipes from allrecipes.com, and today we are featuring something that has to do with lamb. It's a lamb oh, yeah. stew, oh, cool. and it's called Irish Lamb Stew. It's oh, from see. Danny O'Flaherty. Of that's, course. That's, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, something. Yes, and uh, Danny says that it's a hearty, traditional Irish lamb stew. Danny says it's best to actually refrigerate it overnight and then reheat it in the morning. Oh, let those flavors constitute a bit better. more. Yeah. It's a classic dish. That's, a, that's the first lamb dish that I learned when I was 15 at school, was an Irish stew. Irish yeah, stew. exactly. And yeah. that comes from a, a small farm, I, I understand, right? And, right, uh, we went to uh, Linda's small farm up in like the Burlington area where she raises yeah. lamb and it was so fun uh, to see her dog working right. the herd. And you build a fence. And I built a <laughs> fence. <laughs> and it was great. So we appreciate our part time farmers for all the hard work they yes, do. Yes, exactly. A lot, a lot of them uh, do that part time. Uh, I think they're yeah. called uh, hobby farms. Hobby farmers, yes. a little something on the side, a couple of trees exactly. in the back. I'd love to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's, I think, when you say hobby farm, I, they work really oh, hard. They do, they do. <laughs> but it's part time and small farms, right. they still produce and they Absolutely. still sell. And they, they, they contribute to a, a lot of our production in, in Washington. Yeah. And you can see a lot of them at farmers markets all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's great. Okay, so we community. are gonna make some Irish lamb stew next. Okay.
well, look at this stew. No, it looks good. It looks like comfort food. Totally. Perfect Party. for the fall, or the winter. <laughs> yes. And it doesn't smell too strong, you know, even if you, if you don't like lamb, it doesn't, it's not too strong. No, I'm smelling like just some, some spices. Some spices and, and right. nice and that's good lamb. Very that mild. is. It is, tender. really mild. Mm -hmm. It's melting in your mouth. And that broth is just nice and hearty and rich, not too overly salty. Beautiful, perfect dish, perfect. Great potatoes too. We love potatoes. Mm. Irish eyes said, <laughs> Oh, that's a, okay. I wanted an authentic Irish stew, and this was yeah. it. Now we know, yeah. And Irish eyes also says it's absolutely better after a few days. Uh, everything sits, yeah, I know, <laughs> absorbs <laughs> all those flavors. Leftovers are better than uh, sometimes the flavors, they just need a little bit of time to soup, a stew, work always better yeah. the next mm -hmm. day. You could finish this off with some fresh herbs on top. Man, this is yes. fantastic. Thank well, thank you, you, Danny. Thank you. Danny O. <laughs> <laughs> Danny O. To get the recipe for this Irish lamb stew, visit wagrown.com. So the next time you see a farmer, thank them for all the hard work they do. It's not an easy job. And for many farmers, it's not the only job they have. That's it for this episode of Washington Grown. Thanks for watching. <laughs>